And now for our weekly news segment. Okay, let's let's start the news, and then if anybody wants to comment anything, or anybody wants to hop on, or comment on the previous article or anything, just just literally hop on. Uh, let's yeah, see, that there's 40 people watching, guys. Uh, people are people are welcome to jump up if you're, you know, yeah, give give it your first go. And all the people 40, watching, that's, that's, yeah, we had up to 50 at some point. Like and share, guys. We never. Um, that's going to be my my 2024. Uh, <laughs> I promise to myself we'll have to we'll have to start saying that more often yes like and share the episode let's see if we can see this is my first time reading this oh my god <laughs> oh is it really yeah Crazy. Let's, let's get into it because it's really interesting yeah. um yeah so basically binance has categorized privacy coins into three groups based on their willingness to comply with implementing an exchange only address type Immediate risk of delisting. Coins like Monero, which has already stated it will not comply, will likely be delisted next oh, month. Based. I, I love that Monero somehow anthropomorphizes and mm -hmm. has become a person that's stating it will not comply. I will not comply. <laughs> I'm not going to give it. But it's funny, like coins like Monero, they, they, they use yeah. the plural, which, which are coins. Like, <laughs> It's like Monero. It's just like it's just Monero, which I don't want. Um, Monero is becoming the like the generic term for privacy coin. That's like crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, you, like you Google it. You go to Google. You know, people don't say go to search it. You Google it. You, mm -hmm. Monero is literally becoming a de facto term for describing digital cash coins like Monero. Exactly. Um, it's also funny when people start using DuckDuckGo and they try to say DuckDuckGo it. But it doesn't sound good. <laughs> it doesn't sound as good as Google. Like. That's hilarious. That's that's yeah. why you say duck it. Duck it. Oh my god. But like, see, that, that's it. another thing that I appreciate about Monero is that it actually has a cool name, you know? So, it's got an amazing name. I was thinking about it the other day. I mean, it's just, it's just per perfect. Perfect for the meme of being global, global digital cash. I remember back in the Yahoo and Ask Jeeves days, I was trying to tell people to use search engine, like use the word search engine, or you're going to end up with something like Band-Aid instead of adhesive medical strip. Because when you use like all of these random terms, you end up with one brand name kind of consuming the market share. Yeah. And now here it is forever later. And there's like this resistance against using the words Google it. All right. Just, it reminds me of trying to convince the farmers to use open source software in like 2000. And now none of them can use their tractors because they're like entrenched in this horrible monopoly. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they also mentioned under review projects like Zcash that are actively seeking compliance solutions, but may face community of, or resource challenges have been given until the end of February to comply. Um, then we have compliant or actively working towards compliance. Coins such as Fire, which have uh, adopted or are in the process of adopting the new address type, are not at the risk of delisting. So if you want to be a um, a good boy, let's say, then you're going to fall into this category. If you're a bad boy, you're going to be in the... <laughs> They're literally listing it in, in order of, you know, which coin is, is most digital cash-like. Mm-hmm hilarious and then someone said this was interesting oh, I know. yeah yeah, yeah. This is super interesting so yeah this is the the this is the backstory but behind who <laughs> actually said they will not comply this is they were communicating with binary and who was it who else was it um yes from lester whatever his name is yeah so yes. what, what did binary say so um, Binary Fate says, specifically the Binance folks responsible for the listings were in touch with Celsta and I and asked, yeah, so Celsta, um, exact quote, <laughs> any plans to be non-privacy token, i.e. all transactions and address are fully traceable on blockchain and no optional feature to shield or make it private? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is bizarre. I mean, it doesn't... Yes. It doesn't how is there such a large disconnect between the people that work at Binance and what Monero is? Mm -hmm. Like, that makes sense. I, I had that same moment when I was communicating with the um, 
the Bitmain miner company because they had reached out to us. They wanted to be a sponsor for Monerotopia. Mm. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. And they were interested because they were interested in starting to produce uh, ASICs for, for Monero. <laughs> and they just, they just couldn't understand this, this concept oh of Monero being resistant to create. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. If you created one, you should, but they just had no, no understanding. I, oh. I kind of get the same feeling here. Like, for Binance to to ask if Monero had any plans of not being what it is makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, sure. Let's make a CSS for it. It's like reaching out to Bitcoin. Do you have any plans of like centralizing <laughs> it, not making it decentralized anymore? Because I still want to know who they asked and who this spokesperson is. Like, did they, Doug? Were you talking to them? Come on now. No, it was binary fate. He's showing you right here. It was bi it was binary and uh, Celsta. Celsta. They were the ones communicating with them. Yeah. Yeah, and Paul said ridiculous. I, I, I'm surprised that they didn't say, like, who the, what, uh, there's no person who can talk on Monero's behalf. Like, it doesn't exist. I don't even think they, they, they clearly don't understand that concept. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think, yeah, so this is, we'll, we'll swing back to that because I'm yeah. going to ask people. What the you know, what their predictions are on price are. Yes, and it's actually like a good segue to go into this now. Oh, so, someone said in the YouTube section, uh, "Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do when they come for you?" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So now let's talk about samurai swaps. So uh, Rotten tweeted, "Samurai swaps internal beta." Uh, spotted having close to 10k blah blah sit bitcoin sitting in the unspent whirlpool liquidity bitcoin takes more cross chain atomic swaps will pick up steam from settling uh, p2p deals reducing reliance on uh cx is the list away privacy honey badgers doesn't care and someone posted this picture which is the most eastern european picture ever beer and sin cigarettes <laughs> and olives <laughs> yeah right or that's spain i heard somebody say spain that could be spain Right, I can see the olives and yeah, here. could be Spain or it's definitely Europe for sure, based on how yeah. the packet looks like. This is the uh, salmon. Yes, it's funny. Yeah, um, but he said another swaps demo by a samurai dev last night. I was amazed at how smooth and fast it went. Really game changing stuff. So we don't need bit, uh, we don't need uh, Binance at all. Super exciting stuff. I, I got to get the samurai guys on a Monero talk or on this show at some point because. My yes. understanding is they're only implementing this for purposes of um, you know, washing your toxic change, right? I don't know if anybody has insight into this. That's a samurai person. Tux, are you, are you familiar? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Like, is, is it, are they going to, I don't think it's being implemented into Samurai for purposes of doing atomic swaps back and forth into Monero and Bitcoin, but for just a toxic change component of when people whirlpool, is my understanding, which I don't, I guess it will eventually evolve beyond that. Hmm. Somebody's asking, where's the best place to buy Monero? Good, good question. <laughs> not Binance. <laughs> not Binance. You got a few days. <laughs> not Binance. Uh, local local Monero. Monero, right, is what what we would what most people would recommend. Um, in Cake I would Walk. say the best place is anywhere that's a circular economy. Yeah. Sell your goods or services for Monero directly. Exactly. Second best would be a local Monero. Yes. And then, of course, you can buy alternative cryptos and atomic swap. Um, but there are uh, all kinds of resources where a person can find out how to do the the last one online. But really, it's all about selling a good or a service for Monero. That's the number one best way to do it, Mr. One with Nature. <laughs> that can't be stressed enough, right? Yeah, that's what XMR Bazaar will be all about. That's how, you know, I. that's how I make my Monero. Um, Provide, providing services and earn earn in Monero. That, that is the number one best way to obtain. I Crack responded in. to uh, Tux's que a question about how people get Monero. Yes. You get yourself some scuba gear and do recoveries from boating accidents. There's a lot no. of Monero to be had. 
<laughs> gonna have to go deep, very deep to find anything at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's move forward. This one was <laughs> this one was interesting. So the Darknet Market Kingdom was recently shut down in an international operation. How? Well, apparently the owner thought it was a good idea to use Bitcoin and send exchange details slash passwords as well as seed phrases to his own email address. So, um, yeah, and then it got shut down, essentially. Uh, the seizure of the market server infrastructure began on December 16th and included LE agencies from the USA, Switzerland, Moldova, and Ukraine. Okay. Kingdom Market was launched in March 2021 and allowed its users to buy or sell illicit drugs, fake documents, sell information, and other goods and uh, services. It had over 42,000 uh, listings. And in addition to placing a seizure ban banner on Kingdom's Market's homepage, LE used the market's PGP uh, key to make a post on the dread, taunting its, its uh, users. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just just by making mistakes like this. Yeah, so what did... um. I mean, so they, they would have been taken down anyway, even if they were using Monero. It sounds like they were just extremely sloppy, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't the main thing. Yeah. What? A anybody I, have I, any I, insight? Yeah, I, would, I would point out that there's a huge, huge <laughs> difference about using Monero. And that is people who used Kingdom would be in far <laughs> less danger if they were a Monero-only exchange. Mm. Yes, that's a very, very good point. Protecting, protecting the users. Uh, anybody have any good Alaskan? Maybe, maybe you have some, some some insight into percentage of dark markets that are essentially Monero only or prior primarily use Monero. If I were to go by the last thing I saw on Dread, I think it's like eighty four percent. That somebody else might have seen it more recently, but I'm pretty sure it's like eighty four percent. Are Monero only? Oh wow! And that means like literally no other privacy coins or whatever you want to call them. Just freedom, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Makes sense. And the number is gonna keep going up and up. Um, I, I saw this below. Um, the same person that tweeted this post said, "I didn't notice before, but the German authorities were having a laugh. Like it seems, they changed the name to Fallen Kingdom." <laughs> And then use the private PGP key to notify peeps on Dread that Alan Bill was arrested. Wow. Yeah, so it wasn't the fact that they used Bitcoin. It was the fact that, um, you know, he decided to send all this information to his own email. He even <laughs> made cash deposits into his bank account. So this guy was... Yeah. He was trying to get caught. Opposite yeah, one. one. Yeah, so it's crazy. This um, is kind of an interesting view into uh, one of the things that the dark market has to figure out if they're going to use things other than Monero is they have to figure out a way to vet the security practices of the people operating it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you, you just have to have a better system. Um, a lot of people, you know, they just do their exchange and they're happy with their results or they're not and they move on. But um, good exchanges usually emerge for a time and then they shut down and the best ones also don't do any kind of exit scamming, mm -hmm. but there's a huge problem with the fact that it's very difficult to vet the people who are running the dark market exchanges. Um, and that includes for like fed activity too, you know, so that's, it's yet another reason why a parallel economy Monero ecosystem is just so much better than our current systems. Mm -hmm. Good points, good points. Yes. Um, let's go into the next thing. This is um, Canada trying to implement a universal basic income of 2000 per month. So it doesn't matter how much money you make, you will be eligible for $2,000 per month um this is pretty crazy this will be an influx into the economy that will highly that will be highly inflationary yes we all remember what happened with overstimulation during COVID times we're now paying for it for all of it for all of that big time so let's watch this video it's just one minute
Oh, wait, we can't really hear it. No? Oh. Do you want me to pull it up and play it? Or... Uh, Does it let you share a tab? If you can share an individual tab. Yes, um, uh, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me do that. Okay, I'm going to have to stop sharing, and then I'm going to share my screen. It's crazy that they're actually that close to potentially adopting UBI. Yeah, also, I think this should work. Uh, one second. Okay. Well, the UBI is a good cl close step to the downfall of any government due to the uh, due to the fact that they'll have to print money to do it because you can't tax you can't tax in that case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you guys see anything? Let me pull it up. There we go. There we go. Oh, you can see it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Because okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's watch it now. Every Canadian could receive two thousand dollars monthly, and this is a proposal that is currently in the Senate, and it could reach the House of Commons as early as next year. This is to fight poverty. Apparently, every single Canadian will get this credit regardless of your income if you are 17 years or older. This is pretty crazy. I hope that this doesn't fly. We all remember what happened with the SERP, the CERB, the overstimulation during COVID times. We are now paying for all of that big time. That overstimulation created more harm than any good to be honest and i know during COVID times we needed some help for sure but in hindsight now we hopefully we have to learn the lesson and this cannot happen this will be an influx into the economy that will be highly inflationary we don't need any of that right now so what do you think do you think that every canadian should get two thousand dollars to fight poverty <laughs> I mean, it's, it's literally a tool for for making people more reliant on the state and yes. strengthening the 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 deep state of canada i mean that's literally that's literally all that that's accomplished there it's a story as old as time right like with, with rome you were trying to control the food supply make people make the people reliant on the state I have kind of an interesting take on this. Really. Oh, I'm sure you do. Yeah, you always do. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the first off, like if you think of this in terms of numbers, okay, so let's say they give it to the entire population, okay, so which is just shy of 40 million people, I believe. And then if you do some quick back of them napkin conversion in U.S. dollar terms, that's like three quarters of a trillion dollars a year. OK. And the Canadian deficit right now is like 40 trillion Canadian. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's as a percentage of the or uh, the Canadian debt or whatever. All right. So fair enough. That's a pretty big number, but it's actually not that big compared to the debt that they're already carrying. And they're already in or deflationary death spiral that they've got going on. So there is actually a really interesting anarchist argument for this. Hmm. Um, hmm. Now, this this is assuming that they're not going to use it as an excuse to put everybody on the CBDC and, you know, prevent you from donating money to Canadian truckers or whatever. We all know that's what's really going on. OK. Yeah, but, it's 100 percent the implement CBDC. Right? A tail emission in any fiat currency is actually the most anarchist thing you can do. OK. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I'm a hardcore advocate for Monero's monetary policy is because a tail emission does something that gold can't do. It does something that all of these are. It's, it's one of the best arguments for Monero is the fact that it always maintains an equilibrium mm -hmm. and that equilibrium will always equalize with the market forces of the entire basket of all purchased assets. So um to to point out if you're doing um like a, a a massive flood of fiat into the entire population of a country it has certain elements of a tail emission 
that is very pro anarchy. Okay. Now, I, overall, I'm actually super opposed to this idea for a lot of reasons, especially the fact that you have this number that can just be adjusted by bureaucrats and all of that other stuff. But at least in principle, you also create a, there's a certain amount of capital that you could hoard in which you are fighting the tail emission that is this, you know, this liquidity injection into the general population, right? So if you have like, let's say two or 3% of all of the fiat notes of a given currency, but the, the capital flow into the population is being adjusted for inflation at like, you know, 3% or, you know, what, you're you're actually losing money against the money hmm. if that makes sense so it almost forces a certain amount of money to go back into actual capital assets and improves money velocity all right so once again like this is by far the worst way to do it is to have a government just like indiscriminately setting numbers and giving it to their insiders or whatever and only people who are on the tax rolls. I get all of that. Mm. But this idea that, or what do they call it? A UBI. This idea that a UBI is like a communist idea is just fundamentally wrong. Um, it, but the thing is, is the only way we're ever being exposed to it is through like almost a communist implementation. But the truth is, is we're constantly being exposed to it with Monero. You just have to find a way to prevent anyone from controlling the levers, right? Um, and Monero's done a really good job of that, right? So transaction fees are an incredible way to UBI, if you will, because you do want a deflation hedge against your currency. And you also want it to set an equilibrium. UBI is probably the most effective way to do that in a fiat. The problem, and not only that, but you know, you have your your technological revolution argument, right? Um, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if someone like Ted Kaczynski would have actually advocated for an idea like UBI, just not in the hands of the government, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's also a hedge against automation decapitalizing the individual um now once again the way that the commies are spinning this is ridiculous right but th there is an argument to be had here and uh, that was one of the reasons why i wish michael the interview with michael where he would have gotten like a chance to rant about it because the dude totally turned my mind around on this the michael 10 guy that you had uh, on a couple of weeks. yeah he's, he's like, been he up he's i did a total 180 after i i really thought about some of the arguments that he was making like ubi as a as a machinery could be the most pro anarchist thing you could do to a fiat if it weren't for the fact that it's right now it's completely federal reserved and you know capitalist banking cartel controlled as a concept right now well but, the, the decentralized yeah. version of that that they're experimenting with is world coin right i mean that's what that's i don't know i, I highly doubt anything that they're claiming about that is even remotely realistic but i'd point out that monero does have almost a ubi because it's the closest thing to one process or one vote. It's the closest thing to a deflation of the currency hedge. It incentivizes money velocity and it incentivizes people rotating in and out of capital. Right. And that's why I'm saying a tail emission is super close to the general principles of a UBI. And in mm -hmm. fact, if you were to go a step further, with the, these same concepts, like what if, you know, you had like a, a like a Thor chain style, uh, you know, the side chain mining that people are doing with Monero, mm -hmm. you could turn that into something more UBI like on top of the fact that the miners in the main mining are being rewarded. Right. There, and I don't pretend to have it all figured out. I'm just saying it is not a strictly communist ideology not even close the problem is is the only way we're hearing about it 
And the only way that people have ever thought about the concept of a UBI is always this top down commie control, you know, join our Fed coin. Like, let's make sure that a bunch of bureaucrats get to turn your wallets on and off and all that. But if you really look at it from just a technical point of view and you and you and you try to look at it from an anarchy technology point of view, it could make a tremendous amount of sense. And we're already using a lot of it now. Right. With the tail emission thing. But I'll, I'll quit ranting about it. I'm just saying that like Monero people should not just shut their brain off when they see a bunch of socialists advocating for these things. Agreed. We should look at the technology itself and think about how it could be deployed for the purposes of decentralization. Mm -hmm. And it, it could be one of the best tools ever if you think of it like that. Right, right. But but this implementation implemented by the state is obviously going to use the CBDC to push it forward, and then uh, and for purposes of controlling how people use their money, on top of making people reliant on the state for receiving the money, is definitely I I don't see how that can be a step in the right direction. But I see what you're saying. If done in some theoretical fashion using cryptocurrency, then there, there could be some advantage there. See, my thought would just be to take your UBI and buy, like immediately take your UBI as soon as it's deposited and buy gold or silver or Monero. That's what I would do with it. And I think yeah. a lot of people would because it's less inflationary than gold and silver and Monero are less inflationary than the, crypto, than the uh, fiat that you're coming from. And from a Monero marketing standpoint, there are a lot of allies to be had here, right? There are a lot of people that their heart is in the right place when it comes to UBI. And they want to see, because the truth is, is like, it would be more than just a baby step away from fiat Fed notes being printed into existence and being given directly to bankers at 0% interest. And then just like, pillaging the rest of us right it's an unbelievably effective way to not only flip it on its head but i don't know if you guys remember during the ron paul revolution where ron paul would often say like it, it, I'm, I'm reframing it but the, like he would say basically i hate social security and it's a horrible evil but social security is at the point where you can't just shut it off and unplug the people who have grown as dependent as they are on it because you would create a, a humanitarian crisis in an effort to stop stealing, right? So what you have to do is you have to do like a three-phase system of like everybody needs to recognize that they're not going to get it if they don't have it, right? Um, but people who are currently dependent on it need to be weaned off and you see what I'm saying? It's it would be a step in the right direction where you could like still have some of these like banking infrastructure things that exist and basically defang them by saying, OK, we're cutting off your access to zero percent loans from printed fiat Fed notes. Right. But the system can can continue to exist. However, you know, this UBI that's like a, a, a smart contract that piggybacks off of Monero mining or whatever mm -hmm. is going to be distributed out into people who, you know, by the very nature of having a wallet like pegged to this distributed server or whatever. I mean, there's a million ways you could do it. These people are going to get the new money and you're going to have to compete for that new money without your interest rate, your, your interest rate advantage, right? And so it's a way to wean off of the central banking system as well. Like it, it plays into a lot of things. And then you could even wean off the population from UBI as their primary source of income as well, once you've like stabilized the economy. Mm. Good thoughts, good thoughts. Ana man is saying this isn't being implemented. Fake news. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the actual likelihood of this happening in Canada is, but it seemed like it was like actually moving up the, moving through the political system. All right, moving on, moving on. Unless anybody else has anything to say to that body, I don't know if you're, if you're, 
live right now. We have you up on stage. I don't know if you walked away. Hey, yeah, I'm here. I've been listening the whole time. What do you, what yeah, do you think? Just, uh, yeah, yeah, any any take on this? UBI is um, constant. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not sure I can I can totally agree with Alaska here, but it is a perspective I haven't thought of, so I'll need to consider it. Um I'm I'm kind of like if the state wants to do something that's going to ultimately undermine them, well, you know, I mean, they I guess that makes some sense. It seems weird like they talk about UBI, but can they actually implement it? I'm not I'm not hmm. confident that they can without causing even worse problems for themselves. Hmm. My... I don't think I have anything else, any, anything to add to that, really. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's keep it moving. Okay. Uh, fun, fun topic to consider, though. Who knows? We might be closer than we think. Canada, Canada, they're fucking crazy in Canada. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they're in control. So I don't know. I, I think it's in They're the realm of possibilities. Neighbors. I think it's in the realm of possibilities. Twenty twenty in twenty twenty four, probably not, but uh, we'll see. Now, um, Tails. So Tails is actually accepting uh, Monero donations. If you want to donate to Tails, you can now in Monero as well. And then Doug, you wrote, uh, "Beautiful to see Monero being adopted for its intended purpose: untraceable digital cash by respective freedom tech open source projects to fund their development." Boost the daily Monero transaction count. Donate some uh, Monero. Grow the ecosystem. Yeah, that's nice to see. So that is very good to see. Curious how much, how, like, what percentage of donations they get by a Monero versus other other things. I bet we can probably ask them. And yeah, I might, I might have even that some somewhat. Yeah. Hey, wait, what did the JD? Wait, go back for a second. That guy is such a such a asshole. JW Weatherman. It's not true. It, it destroys <laughs> the next level for source project. Yeah, yeah. Get always your line. Maxi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had him on the show years ago. Oh, really? He's a yeah, extreme BTC Maxi. He thinks Monero is a scam. He's always well, Monero is a scam. Bitcoin's a bigger scam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Um, so Did was, anyone read those five rules? He's oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. hating on Monero. He's like, it's not untraceable. And then he's got the five laws of Monero. It's like, this is what you must do to use Monero or with, to use Bitcoin without getting scammed or hacked or traced. Or, but it's like most people would never understand any of that. And I mean, I would partially agree with that statement because I wouldn't necessarily myself say that Monero is untraceable because it is through some means, you know, sort of traceable, but it's it has a huge amount of plausible deniability and it's very, very hard to trace. But it, it could be if people make mistakes in their high profile targets. When Seraphish Jampus comes out and, uh, you know, we've got the full membership proofs, that'll make Monero like insanely high in the anonymity set agreed 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 but you know we, we just confidential transactions and stealth addresses nobody's compared to bitcoin it's untraceable yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> you yeah, could yeah, put yeah. it that way yeah you're, you're just being too fair but so this, this is interesting uh 10 hours of bitcoin well <laughs> that's a lot of uh that's a lot of material what is this? The latest oh, fat. Oh, okay. It's a website that he has on his description. Oh, uh, okay, okay. But I guess like it goes to the economy and the actual workings, but in Monero, it if you want to understand how it just works, it takes you a single sentence. You don't need to do anything like not even one hour, like one, 10 seconds. It's private, you can just use it, send it. Oh, and it's private, I don't need to do anything. Yes, okay. Yeah, enough, enough is this yeah. our uh, new segment grilling Monero or Bitcoin maxis? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We, we don't. I'll need take some extra. Any. I'll take some extra barbecue sauce with that. <laughs> so okay. this is pretty cool. Uh, can you translate? Yeah, translate the post. Yes. Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Jocelyn. Uh Ernesto gave me uh, this cell phone and taught me how to use Monero. We want you to help us give a cell phone to my sister. Uh, breeds so she can use Monero as well. Um, so this is happening in in uh, Argentina, mm -hmm. in Iberete, in Formosa. Mm -hmm. 
Square Little Bitcoin. I met him when we went to Argentina. He's actually the guy who made sure that I didn't leave Argentina without visiting Formosa. I was kind of on the on the fence about it because it was uh, like a two hour plane ride from Buenos Aires. He's like, no, you got to go, bro. I just came back from there. He's a BT, he's a Bitcoin guy. He's like a Bitcoin privacy guy, big samurai guy, but he's also a Mon you know, Monero guy. So he, he ran over to Monero town when he saw what was happening. Cause he's in the area. Mm -hmm. Um, he actually essentially moved there. Right. So mm -hmm. he, he's a cool dude. He's like, he sees, Monero organically being adopted, so he he went and moved to Monero Town, um, and so he's trying to grow adoption there as well, helping out with Alessandro. We've all seen Alessandro. We've had him on the show here. He's the one that's doing the the football thing over there, the soccer thing. He made the joined the backstage for a second, but I guess he left already. Oh, I'd, he, yeah. I'd love to help, but how are they gonna give a girl an iPhone? I mean, have they never heard of lineage or calyx or graphene yeah. or, I mean, come on, you got to teach them right, you know, you got to. To be fair, fair it's it's probably gold compared to whatever they were yeah. using before. So, but my point is, uh, you know, I you never know for sure what like who's doing legit things, who's not. Mm -hmm. This guy, I mean, I'm I'm fairly certain everything he does is is legitimate. So cool to see and people want to participate in this i think he should he should do like a kuno for something like this so people can see how much have been raised rather than just throwing an address out there so they're actually yeah. a fucking goal well, it's funny because he always made fun of me because i kept bringing up kuno he's like we, we kind of had a, a joke going back and forth about that but a squella bitcoin man uh start using kuno and raising for these things now moving on let's discuss uh nigeria so the title says Nigeria's crypto ban hindered in Nigeria adoption despite high global ranking. Nigerian tech and innovation legal expert Chinedu Albert and said in Nigeria adoption will only happen when the government gains the trust of Nigerians. <laughs> the Nigeria attains a more trusted status. Um, yeah, the Nigerians are going to be trusting. The, it's right around the corner. I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're coming. ripe and ready to trust their government real soon. <laughs> it's coming in 2024. <laughs> We had we had somebody on Monero talk that was from Nigeria and oh, cool. is out there actually teaching people about Monero. Yeah, well, and one of the points he was making is that you know cash is not going away in Nigeria mm -hmm. anytime soon. So like this idea that like cash is being eliminated around the world and trying to push people into CBDC, he doesn't see there being the political will to get rid of actual traditional cash there because all the politicians mm -hmm. use it in corrupt ways, like mm -hmm. to pay people. Essentially, the cash is used to pay people to go vote like <laughs> can we yeah. just call it the jake argument because i've been making that argument oh, since okay. the first time we yeah. talk <laughs> i mean yeah. the bad guys have to launder their money to people i mean come on <laughs> yes yeah um yeah but essentially they uh they implemented a ban in 2021 then um uh, they implemented the ina era it wasn't really being used and still to this day um a May 2023 report by the International Monetary Fund indicated approximately 14,000 Inaira weekly transactions, which was representing only 1.5% of the total wallets. This implies that 98.5% of wallets go unused weekly, indicating disappointingly low adoption. Um, then they did lift yeah. the gun. Can I just point out that there is a very high likelihood that does 1.5% of the total wallets are the same user using multiple wallets like there is a very mm. very high chance that those numbers are actually like stacked in favor of the government on this one it's probably more like 0.25 <laughs> regardless that's still a very disappointing number <laughs> so. it's interesting to keep 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 your eye on I, I i do think this number will start to tick up as the government slowly boils the frogs and figures mm. out ways to push people into using the cbdc for sure for sure some countries may just incentivize some countries may just force the population to use it yeah. so we're gonna have to see uh africa's crypto leader, leaders highlights of 2023 initiatives um we have um, south africa nigeria zimbabwe kenya and ghana they're the top five countries um, uh, adopting Bitcoin with the most demand for digital currency and the most active local cryptocurrency communities. 
South Africa has made significant progress in cryptocurrency regulations, second only to Central African Republic. Um, South Africa's regulatory initiatives, including include tax uh, taxing cryptocurrencies since 2018 and recognizing them as digital assets. Um, so South Africa is onto cryptocurrency. Nigeria, we discussed Nigeria. Uh, despite a national internet <laughs> penetration rate, I don't know why they use that word. Only could have used usage or any other one. Uh, so forty percent of the population essentially of Nigeria has access to internet, and they also um, used to have uh, a ban on uh, banks from dealing in cryptocurrency. Uh, they, but they still are among the world's leaders in crypto adoption. It is second on the global crypto adoption index behind only India. So we talked about Nigeria extensively. extensively. Then we have Kenya, uh, which now taxes crypto and monetize online content. Um, so the adoption of cryptocurrency has gained traction in Kenya as well. I'm going to have somebody this week who I think is, I think he's located in Kenya. He's going to be on, uh, the narrow talk. So oh, that's cool. Insight into that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, then we have central African Republic. They also made significant, significant progress in cryptocurrency regulation, making it one of the most active in crypto innovation in the spring of 2022. Uh, the car, which is central African Republic became the first African country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender, which was interesting, but this was short lived as the government began its crypto token project. Sango coin days after the Bitcoin law was um, enacted. And I think lastly, yes, we have uh, Ghana, which has quietly emerged as a noteworthy player in the cryptocurrency space with minimal government or central bank interference. Ghana has embraced cryptocurrencies without significant regulatory uh, hurdles. So um, we'll see who's going to be what's going to happen in 2024 with Africa and, and crypto and not only. All right, anything else? Yes, a couple more. Okay. Um, Arthur Hayes says, uh, Tradify traditional finance could completely destroy Bitcoin with spot ETF. Here's why. Um, so in a new essay, the crypto veteran says that if ETFs managed by Tradify asset managers are too successful, they will completely destroy Bitcoin. Essentially, he talks about um, mining, and the reward system and how with block rewards gradually dropping until they hit zero in the year uh, 2140, Hayes notes that miners will only receive Bitcoin income via fees if the network is used for transactions. However, if institutions are simply hoarding most of the coins in cold storage to back their ETFs, Hayes says there won't be enough Bitcoin movement to generate fees and secure the blockchain, um, which a lot of people from the, from the commun Monero community thinks about and that's why we like yeah, he says black rock the world's largest trade fi asset ministers in the asset accumulation game they vacuum up assets store them in a metaphorical vault issue a tradable security and charge a management fee for their hard work yeah i mean uh this this guy I, I, this guy is he's 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 on top of it arthur mm -hmm. is uh so he, he's been saying this forever mm -hmm. This is an old new article or is this an old article? Uh new, December twenty fourth. Yeah. 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 We shall see. I don't know. I mean, uh Alaska now, what do you think of this theory with regards to the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF? Is it problematic for Bitcoin? Um, for one, there is effectively a Bitcoin ETF micro strategies which i think body's been saying that for what like three years now <laughs> so um and the fact that um the, the fact that there are people who are saying that this bitcoin etf is gonna be like this game changer in fact it's not the only bitcoin etf there's actually another one already too that's even more the like more of an etf than micro strategies right um and i th personally you know because i i have a perpetual tinfoil hat underneath this wig i'm wearing or whatever but uh, personally i think that uh this is just a, a pump and dump like verbal diarrhea that the powers that be are using knowing that everybody's gonna eat it up right um and i think that actually this pump and dump 
plays into a lot of the other things that we see, right? So I, I don't think that they're doing it based entirely around Monero, but I think that it plays into it. The fact that, you know, for the longest time, Monero was being shorted, naked shorted. And what you can do is you can pump the price against Bitcoin by pumping Bitcoin that you actually hold. And then you can even atomic swap or whatever into Monero and use it to cover your naked shorts. And then you're also simultaneously out of Bitcoin as you let the price collapse. Like that's just one small example of why they would, oh, there's an ETF coming and then use the regulators that they own and control like to, oh, we can't do this now and let the price collapse and be like, but we're thinking about it in five days. And then it pumps again and then, oh, we just, you know, regulation, this and that. And then it goes back down. Um Honestly, like people in our space, what we can do about this right now is we have to stop playing the game of price discovery being set by the people who have the loudest microphone, right? So, for example, I see people all the time looking up the local Monero price in aggregate, which is always more accurate. And by the way, it's usually low compared to the price up here in Alaska, right? Like, I mean, you would be smoking crack if you thought you could get Monero for less than $230 in Alaska, right? And, and nobody thinks that way up here. Or another thing is like, the you know, nobody actually believes that the gold spot price is what you get gold for on the street, right? And yet we allow these people to play these games because you can buy and sell it on your digital casino using your Robinhood app that has been shown over and over again to be under the thumb of their financers, right? We have to get away from this idea that the news is allowed to pump and dump by manipulating a bunch of AI generated algorithm, bot, buy, sell. It's, it's all so fake, right? And when, and when you see people like BlackRock, right, that, that, all they do is they just like benefit off of people paying fees and riding out these price pump and dumps using their media aggregators. And then they use other people's money to control us, right? Like, oh, we're only going to give you money if you're ESG compliant and so on. That's not even their money. And they're using it to control you. They're using it to govern you. And part of the reason they can do that is because people like us keep listening to these price pump and dump things that come from bot generated news articles and then a guy who uses who writes for the daily hodl is like citing them as sources right so real people are citing fake bullshit as a source to sound credible it's it's so backwards right when if you actually go out into the real world and you buy monero or bitcoin you pay a totally different price its availability is a totally different reality, right? And then people actually use it, right? It's like, what are people going to do if you have this ETF that's just like holding Bitcoin? It doesn't go anywhere, right? It doesn't reflect the actual value of anything, right? <laughs> but, but you know, you've got those Bitcoin maxis just like busting out the jergens so they can talk more about how the price number go up to the moon, bro, to the moon. And it's like, well, go use it right now. If you want to actually like pump the price of some Bitcoin, go get somebody to take it for goods and services. Do you, right? do you we, agree with Arthur's uh, prediction that this will lead to, you know, just a few ETFs, whatever, holding the vast majority of Bitcoin, and then they have no incentive to use it. And because of that, miners st stop mining and the whole Bitcoin network comes to like a... You know, I agree with everything up until far. kind He's of the basically last proposing part. It far, yeah. Like, I, I don't necessarily see the connection to the miner part um, because of some other self-regulating things that go on between like the value of Bitcoin and mining. And so, but I do see, um, you know, on the interview that you had, uh, which I didn't you, ask. You're saying co coins just, the coins won't be moving. So there won't be any transaction fees, miners. Well, I mean, that is true, but you also but have the, to look the at. Network the network difficulty will drop until there is an incentive to mine again. 
so there's that, which, you know, is one thing, but the other thing is, is, um, it, even though it is a, uh, it, it, it's not proof of stake, it's proof of work, right? As far as like whether or not something is going to be adopted or whatever, if you consolidate a lot of Bitcoin into a few ETFs, that like just the act of moving the the keys from one ETF to another, uh, you, like they could fire up their their miners ahead of time and then like make the move or make the switch or there's all kinds of ways that you can mitigate that, but the the, the consolidation part is the part that should be freaking people out in the Bitcoin space because. On the one hand, you want on ramps and you want liquidity. But on the other hand, if you consolidate all of these, uh, all of the Bitcoin and all of the keys into a, a tiny handful of ETFs, what happens to what do they call it? The, the t determination dust amount or whatever. There's a word for it. But basically, like if your E note is a certain size it basically disappears right and so like that's the real hazard here right is the 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 pumpers are are so delusional if they think this is good for their currency it's like and then on top of that like what happens to lightning adoption and all of this other, like the, the consolidation part is horrifying from a technological perspective is what i'm getting at and i mean this rant could take like 200 hours <laughs> if i kept going but um, just the idea that <laughs> the people who can print money into existence can accumulate bitcoin at any price and then control the value of mining operations by the mere act of moving from one etf to another okay at, like at what point have you totally taken control of the mining algorithm? If you can control the price of the mining by just moving the, the, the sats that you have around at targeted points, like you could crash the value of all of the mining rigs by just hoarding it and using only layer two. Right. And then buy up all of the mining rigs for pennies on the dollar. You could even buy them in your, your exploding Bitcoin price, right? And then take all of those miners, turn them on and move your Bitcoin and basically transaction fee back all of your money. And, and or there's, I mean, there's so many ways that this whole thing can be manipulated with the ETF scam thing. And of so course, like all of these tech bros have no idea how the fiat world has literally taken over their precious coin because they're just looking number go up man number go up and they're like eking their way towards the termination line like the dust line or whatever i forget what it's called but like they're they're slow creeping their way into all of their notes having zero value because the price to transact their minuscule sat count that's distributed into 15 different utxos it, it, like it's literally worthless now it's so uh, so the I think the more general, like so Arthur Hayes is pointing at a more general reality and without really saying it overtly, and that is small blocks encourage the centralization of supply because why would you right why would you want to try and use it on chain when it costs so much? Um, so it's like it's not just the ETFs, it's the exchanges, it's the entire cabal. Bitcoin supply is already heavy heavily centralized anyways, but. Um, I mean, I think the the small blocks, keeping blocks small and having no other realistic way of scaling, because um, Lightning is not realistic at the moment, not without larger blocks, um, and CTV is still a, a twinkle in, in a few people's eye at the moment. Um, I'm not sure it'll actually um, come to fruition. But yeah, I mean, the, the more general point is that small blocks encourage exactly this behavior. Um, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that necessarily what Arthur's saying here will, will become the fate of Bitcoin. It, it really depends, like if the cabal is getting their hands onto Bitcoin and they really intend to like put it at the forefront, that sounds a lot to me like a fake libertarian or marginal libertarian presidential candidate um, that gives a little bit of lip service to some freedom stuff, but doesn't actually do anything. And I feel like that's what they want to turn Bitcoin into. It's like, oh yeah, this is the freedom money. This is what, what people that care about liberty use. 
And then meanwhile, they've integrated it into the entire economic system and they keep the price high, right? Because you need, it's like the stock market. You need to keep that price high. You need to keep the focus there. That's the thing that says how good the economy is. So they can use Bitcoin as like this, um, this sort of, uh, I don't know, Trojan horse against, uh, against actually doing real freedom money and actually having a way of transacting outside the system. So I would tend to think that, that they would, I mean, hypothetically, but it's just one way, one vector of looking at it, but I don't think that necessarily they would need to crash the price. I don't think that they would have any interest in necessarily crashing Bitcoin as long as they can keep people in that ETF and they can keep people on custodial uh, scaling solutions and or liquid, especially since um, a lot of the exchanges are now starting to come under the thumb of the government, of the SEC, um, of DOJ. Um, all of those exchanges that permit your withdrawal from the liquid sidechain, like those, there's like, I think 12 of them. And uh, so we're talking Bitfinex. I'm pretty sure Binance is one of them. Um, I can't remember if Kraken is on there, if it's like their parent company, Payword LTD. But um, anyways, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced that Arthur Hayes is really um, nailing the game theory of what's going to happen to Bitcoin mining. But, um, but I think he is kind of making a more general point that, um, yeah, we can expect centralized solutions to continue for as long as Bitcoin is unable to scale. We could call it AstroTurf coin now. Bitcoin is now AstroTurf coin. <laughs> <laughs> An NFT. Okay. All righty. We have three more, and then that's it for the new section. So, yeah, nice everybody's 2024 predictions. Once again, anybody that wants to jump up, please do. Please do. Tux, if you could put the link in there again. Is Tux still around? Did Tux abandon us? No, he's still here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody that wants to jump up, uh, M2, I see you asking some good questions. Sounds like you're new to Monero. Jump up on stage. We'll put the link there. You're asking about KYC Bitcoin. Feel free to jump up. Go ahead, Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's Crypto for the Homeless. 2023 was amazing. Check it out. Um, basically, if you go to uh, Crypto for Homeless, for, for the homeless, you can donate uh, to homeless people uh, in Monero, which is really cool. And uh, essentially donate and volunteers will buy and hand out food and provide uh, the proof as well. And then, yeah, they also post the, the pictures. So... It's really cool. That's and cool. they've been operating for a long time, right? This project? Yeah. Five years. That's cool. Yeah, so that's a cool project. Um, NeroCon, uh, make sure that you go and contribute to the crowdfunding campaign. Okay. So, They're still raising. Yep, so that's uh, still raising money. And then the last thing, which <laughs> this is a huge uh, topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I pissed off the entire ThorChain community. <laughs> it came out a little strong, but it's true. It's true. The fact is, Monero is not on Thorchain. It's a, it's a quote unquote dex. Why don't they have Monero? It's the one coin that makes the most sense to cater to. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like why we need a dex in the first place. And the I thought it was kind of interesting to see you poke the hornet's nest a little <laughs> harder than you usually do, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, you know, you're usually a little more soft spoken than you know. <laughs> I was just speaking from the heart. I don't know, right? I mean, you guys were there. We witnessed it. We saw them. We saw them balk at adding Monero. They no. debated it. It was going to happen. The tech, the the fact that they couldn't overcome the 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 technical hurdles, they certainly can overcome it. Um, it it was, and that wasn't what was being discussed at the time. It wasn't just that. It was there was a. There are people in the community, voices in the Thorchain community that cost be their cost benefit analysis was that it was not worth trying to take the risk of adding Monero because it's, you know, it, it may make Thorchain a target, whatnot. They rather focus on number go up. They rather focus on number go up straight up. And uh, while I think they, they realized that Monero would probably be one of the most used. They didn't at the end of the day they didn't want to put themselves in, in the bullseye of of the state and regulators hmm. right am i am i wrong about that that's how i remember going down i don't know alaska alaska now were you were you uh paying attention to those developments oh i remember, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> like, i'm i'm gonna keep from blowing my top on this one because 
oh man, does this one get me heated? <laughs> like, but just the, the two faced, like it's it's one thing if Thor Chain is like, no, we're gonna try to be more like middle of the road. We just don't want to take. But just the way that they totally like two faced for their own relevance. Right, like just to stay like cool with the people that they totally fucking burned. Like it was only like six months ago. Do they think that we got like goldfish memory going on? It's like <laughs> no, no, we totally remember. Do not like I would have never gotten mad if they would have just been straight up about like what they said six months ago and like now, like, oh yeah, I mean it's super great. And Thor Chain's gonna do that one day. Bullshit. We remember. Like I, I'll, I'll shut up now because Pepperidge I'm farm remembers. And you worked up. Yeah, we remember. We were trying to get they. We had them involved in the first Monerotopia conference, and at that time, it was like things. It really felt like it was going to happen, and we had Haven that was present there because the idea was that the Haven devs were involved in this, and if they could figure out how to add Haven, they could figure out how to add Monero or vice versa. Um, but yeah, never happened. It never happened. <laughs> you no, know, I don't know. It's worse than that. The Haven Dev guy, because it's pretty much one guy, right? Put a ton of work, like a ton of work, into making it possible. Like he did all the heavy lifting and everything. In fact, it was part of the conference. Like I don't know if you remember during the conference when the Haveno guy. Yes. Right. Um, it, it, the Haveno guy put like a ton of work into trying to be super integratable and all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, the, there's literally only one thing that Thorchain can do to redeem itself, and it's just to shut the hell up and integrate Monero and do and don't say a fucking word. You know, it's like that is literally the only way that they're going to redeem themselves after a total, like, I mean, the hypocrisy was just mind blowing. Yeah. When you know what they just said there, uh, but the thing is, is like, sorry, bro, your number go up strategy just left you in the dust. Sarai, Haveno, all of these other things are going to leave you in the dust, make you completely irrelevant because either people are going to go the centralized exchanges route and use their AstroTurf coin, or they're going to go the real economy route and you're, you're going to be irrelevant. Like that's just all there is to it. Like nobody cares anymore. Integrate Monero or go away. If I yeah. remember correctly, they kept getting compromised. Like, I don't think they've had any significant compromises in the last year, but I haven't really been paying attention to them. But I remember like Thorchain kept having like these weird bugs and compromises. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. And that's look what Gonbat Fire just said about like, what's the point of censorship resistance if they just self censor? It's like they made themselves tech. useless. Like the minute that they started like bending the knee, it's like, oh, well, you just devalued yourself 100% by bending the knee. So who cares? What surprised me about their, their decision to go in that direction is I thought Eric Voorhees was a big part of the, the project, at least at the impetus. So I'm just surprised because he, you know, he's always kind of walk the walk, not just talk the talk. I, I feel like in terms of, although I guess... Monero was was delisted from that instant exchange that he used to run. I don't know. I'm just I'm just surprised that with him as part of the project, he wasn't he, he didn't really instill more of a uh, like a cypherpunk ethos there. But hey, number go up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, can I uh, can I bust in? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Hey guys, drunk down me here. Um long time. One thing that came up that seems like it was kind of a big story that no one uh, has mentioned yet, I don't think, is that Science Magazine released a study they did of El of Salvadorians rejecting Bitcoin over privacy concerns. Oh. And how adoption is just tanked. I, I tweeted it. You can find it in my thread, but I can't switch screens or I'll drop the call here. So if anyone wants to look at that article, they've got uh, measurements of who adopted it, who tried it, who continued trying, it, and it's just tanking. So, real, no, I, uh, can see, I can see that. I'm not surprised by that, but what surprises me is you're saying the reasoning is because of privacy. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. That, that's I would, that yeah, I was too. But you know, it's a, yeah. they released a study, so 
wow. Science Magazine. I don't think they have a, do a dog in the fight necessarily. <laughs> but um, yeah, they prefer, <clears throat> I think that's the market saying we pre they're, they're using cash. That's their preference. And I think that's the market saying we prefer fungibility and privacy. So. You know, one thing I'd point out is in El Salvador, people who have means and money are much more concerned about their privacy because they don't want other people to know they have money. Um, like for security reasons and safety reasons, like you have to be very careful. If people know that you have access to a, a large amount of funds, it puts your life at risk and the life of your family at risk. So they're ahead of the curve on that one. That's, that is for sure the truth. Uh, drunk dial me. Uh, DM me that if you don't if you don't mind when you get a chance. Maybe I can. Yeah, I'll uh, send it in the, the private chat. Um, yeah, it's one of my more recent tweets. How's it go, man? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Time. Oh wait, sorry. That's the wrong one. That's not happy New Year, one. everyone. Yeah, happy New Year. Happy New Year so, Tony, did we finish the news? Uh, actually, we just got one more from uh, Tux, and this one actually, is from... Actually, that's the wrong one. Here's the right one. That was a different yeah. one. I mean, you can, you can put that one up if you want. It's unrelated. There you go. I just sent the right uh, one. Oh, okay. It's uh, Drunk Dalmi's tweet, uh, with a quote, quote retweet for the Science Magazine tweet. You know, Tux, I realized we, did, we didn't play the special guest segment because we didn't have a special guest. We should, we should probably roll that so we could uh, get cake up there. That's right. We got to get cake up there. All That's right. what Let's I said it. at the beginning. Nobody reads. My well, Sunita did. Uh, she mentioned the sponsors, but well, we'll, we'll make uh, drunk. Well, uh, drunk dial me. Could be our special guest today. So we'll, we'll they generally, they generally don't read the, <laughs> the chats. 